Greetings, Elden Ring crack addicts. Welcome back to another challenge run where I hang myself from a string so you can beat the content out of me. Anyways, I decided to go through the game only using the Karian Knight Sword, a continuation of our mini-series of testing certain weapons to see how good they are throughout the entire journey. Which, of course, I will rate at the very end of this video. I know it doesn't seem like a challenge, but suck my nuts, it was fun to do. And I streamed most of it, so if you want to, you know, check that out, I stream on YouTube. I don't know when, though, I just kind of do it at random. Although, some of my less happy moments were caught off camera. <coughs> but just to make things more difficult, I'll be doing this entire challenge completely blind. I probably should have prefaced that my character is going to be blind. His forehead comes out just a bit too much. <laughs> Anyways, without further ado, my name is Josh, also known as Gorgonzola, and I hope you enjoy the Karian Knight Sword Challenge run, or whatever I'm gonna call this video. I started with a prisoner class because with a name like Cho Chomper, I feel like he was in prison at some point. My first step was to grab the sword, obviously, which thankfully wasn't that hard to acquire. Now in my last run, I did Alexander's entire quest. This time around, I just went for him immediately, like the ravenous animal that I am. Yeah, I can get you out of here, don't worry, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. don't worry, don't worry about it, yeah, yeah, yeah. there you go, good boy. Now die! Stay mad. Once my sword was to plus four, I made my way to Mar Get Good. Oh! I tried. Alright. <laughs> Now the main reason I defeated him this early on was to acquire another talisman pouch, just so I could equip the jar shard. That's pretty much it. I hope nobody will grab me from behind and penetrate me. I was serious about that. <laughs> yes, yeah, thought I was just gonna take it in the butt, did you? No. I'm a no butt man. <laughs> now for this run, I needed Rogier's attire because every piece gives me a 2% boost in magic skills for a total of 8%. The main beauty of this weapon is of course the Ash of War Karian Grandeur. If I pronounce it incorrectly, I'm sorry, you can correct me in the comment section. But anyways, it's insanely powerful on its own and with Rogier's set, it'll be even better. Luckily, I don't have to do his entire quest line, just uh, make him go to sleep and strip him naked. Give me your clothes. <laughs> Sorry. After being a complete idiot and defeating the wrong Ur tree, I acquired the Magic Shrouding Tear. Next was the Ritual Sword Talisman, then the Golden Vow Ash of War, and then I wanted to test my progress, my in progress build, against the Falling Star Beast Jr., and I also need a Somberstone 6. This, this game doesn't get me mad anymore, just mildly annoyed. Fortnite gets me angry sometimes. Whoa! All right, we got it, okay. Oh my goodness, that was crazy. I mean, dude, that damage is ridiculous. Um, Terra Magica was the last ingredient before waltzing into Godric's arena to, of course, chomp on his chode, which makes me wonder, did he graft, like, more penises to himself? You know what, we're not gonna get- Come on, sweetheart. I'm not gonna hurt you. <laughs> wow, that still did so much damage! I'm so surprised it still did all the damage that it did. <laughs> Fool. <laughs> I 
think this is a great time to explain all the buffs that I have going on. So, with Rajir's set, recently obtained, that's an 8% boost in magic damage, specifically for the skill. The magic striding cracked tier is plus 20% magic for 3 minutes, which is plenty of time. We have the Golden Vow Ash of War on my starting weapon that we can swap in and use to give us an 11.5% boost in attack. The Ritual Sword Talisman is a 10% boost in attack. The Jar Shard increases skills by 10%. Terra Magica is a bit tricky to use, but well worth the payoff as it boosts any magic damage by 35%. Now the last two talismans that I need come a bit later, but it's the Godfrey's Icon, of course, boosting charged weapon arts and spells by 15%, and the Magic Scorpion Charm, boosting magic damage even further by 12%. Now if we add all of this up, our damage is boosted by roughly 120%. That is nuts! Although to be real, Terra Magica is good for maybe one or two hits in like the beginning or certain, you know, phase transitions. So realistically, on average, we have an 85% boost, which of course is still incredibly powerful. Funny enough, the next boss doesn't really care about all my buffs. Renala as the Queen of Feet stuff, she resists most of my damage by a ton. Might as well be throwing condoms at her because all that damage I did on Godric a second ago uh, was not here at all. Uh, she has a resistance to Cho Chomping by quite a bit. What, you didn't see that on the chart on the Wikipedia page? It was actually better to simply smack her with the sword than use the Ash of War. Now, because this fight played out like my first time playing the game, it, it really wasn't special. So it's hard to say much, except I wait for the day where I can suckle on those massive toes. The Dragonic Tree Sentinel, as always, squeezed my testicles into submission. I hate this boss, because I always face him underleveled, never prepared, and as far as I know, there's really no way to have a scripted fight with this fool. The only plan I had was to use the fully charged Ash of War in the beginning, hop on the horse, and commence in light jousting. My chat was actually very helpful by giving me pointers with a lightning strike, and I thank you guys for that. That's so dumb. I know I didn't listen half the time, but I still love you. And with that out of the way, our sword is upgraded to plus nine, and I can now grab Godfrey's icon along with the magic scorpion charm from this cock boy. As my file name suggests for this clip, um. <laughs> Tough Tree Sprinkles was next, in order to acquire the Stone Barbed Crack tier. I just wanted it, there really wasn't a huge reason to grab it. Next up was Godfrey Shadow Clone. I'm gonna use- I'm gonna use the Terra Magica on you, brother. Come on. Witness me! Ah! What?! Oh, okay, I did hit him. I thought I didn't hit him there. Yeah, just wait until the next boss. Now, Morgod was actually a bit annoying, much like a toddler who can't sit still. So like you do with most toddlers, they have their own magical shackle that binds them to the earth. Again, thanks to my chat for reminding me that he has one of those in the first place. And as you saw in the intro, this fight was nuts, in the sense that it lasted a total of 15 seconds, much like my actual nutting experience. Flask. I'm gonna put Terra Magica right here come on baby hmm? As I made my way to the fire giant, I actually made a friend in the shape of a monstrous crow. He was very sweet, he didn't bite me, you know, and I shall name him Edgar. Now the fire giant, this time around, for once, uh, was a very easy fight. First phase, ridiculous, uh, only takes three Karian Grandeurs to initiate the second phase. First, I just whacked him a couple of times with some R2s, and then the first weapon art always breaks his ankle. The second staggers him, and the third forces him to rip off his leg for the 50th time. With the opening slam, I set a Terra Magica, and after a fully charged Karian Grandeur, I ran around trying not to get hit because, I mean, there's really not much else I could do here. I would stay under him after his eruption attack, but it has 100% accuracy in Pokemon, so I just ran away. Regardless, I defeated the Fire Giant without taking a single hit. Now before I head to the Foreskin Brother, Incest Brothers, Brothers of Incest, Foreskin Buddies, I quickly did the Commander Nail Skip in order to grab a part of the Halig Tree Medallion. 
Much like 7 p.m. on a Friday night, it's at this point in the run where everyone becomes sweats and prevents most, if not all, of my attempted Karian Grandeurs. The bosses just don't care, especially the ones with gang fights, so that's cool. So please enjoy my worst moments from the fight. <laughs> This is gonna kill me. I forgot that that move gets me through the wall. I'm not gonna get angry. I'm not gonna get angry. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna get really mad! You gotta be kidding me, bro. Why are they always stuck together like Foreskin? They really are Foreskin brothers. Once I was in a 1v1 situation though, it wasn't that bad, but my desire to use the weapon art consistently is what killed me during this fight. I probably would have beaten the Foreskin Incest Brothers sooner if I just did it normally, but how much fun is that? I want to use the weapon art as much as possible. Malekith was more like a pissing dog this time around, he was really easy. First phase was a bit tough though because he's quicker in his animations than the second, but I threaded the needle with his Earthquake Boulder uh, move and I stood there unfazed. Second phase always starts with a jumping slash, really easy to get behind and then land a semi-charged weapon art. And from there, I just found openings I needed and put down this overgrown puppy of death, which is kind of ironic that it fits the theme of death in the newest Puss in Boots movie. It's really cool. Sick antagonist, by the way. Gideon was a pushover too, so much so that I have no footage for him. I completely forgot, but if you're new on this channel, that's really not a surprise. I tried to recreate the fight, but it won't top the original. Godfrey was next, the first Elden Lord, but unfortunately Cho Chomper came to munch, so we can't let him leave here alive. I mean, we can, but he's he's gonna he's not gonna have a, his. Let's continue. The strat was simple: have Godfrey throw his axe, charge a weapon art, land a few hits, hit him fully charged while he buffs. Boom! Second phase. It didn't happen that smoothly, so the fight lasted a little bit longer than it should have, but the majority of it kind of went on as expected. Second phase was just a mess. He's faster, leaves not much time for anything, so the traditional way was the best way. I may have gotten a bit too greedy here and there, uh, but second try, Godfrey went down. It's time for the final boss. All right, yeah, let's take care of Radon real quick. Actually, let me back up just a little bit. Wow! Nope, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> you're going nowhere. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, now let's fight Radagon. Not gonna lie, I was a bit upset. Edgar didn't survive the burning of the Earth Tree, and I haven't had a Cho to chomp on for a bit. For this fight, I saved the Wondrous Physic for the Elden Beast, since Radagon is essentially a scripted fight at this point. His opening allows for a fully charged Grandeur just right off the bat. A few hits leads to the scripted Jumping Slam. Once he lands, a semi-charged Grandeur will actually stagger him, critical hit, and another semi-charged weapon art as he rises up, which will then trigger the triple Erdtree Deluxe Slam, 599. From there, simply pull the old-fashioned, you know, merry-go-round trick and get ready for the Elden Beast. Pretty easy. Now, the Elden Beast was a bit weird, uh, but I could get him to about a third of his health without so much as a scratch. I still can't finish him off or prevent the Elden Stars move, which sucks. So from there, it was basically play the game and get good. It really wasn't that hard because as big of a boss as he is, it's really easy to actually use the weapon art for this fight. But there you have it, folks. We beat Elden Ring with the Karian Knight Sword. However, there were three boss chodes that I still wanted to chomp on. Dragonlord was first, and a neat trick I found was if he does his claw swipe up in the air to the fire breath attack, I don't know how else to describe it, but if you stand on the other side of his tail, it'll actually push you out of the way while still keeping you right there on the tail. So you can just kind of do as much damage as you want. My damage here was not as good as the Grafted Dragon on my previous run, but it was still very strong without question. Mog was also super easy, mainly because I also used his shackle, and as you can see, Daddy does do damage, especially when he sits there chanting his ritual or whatever. And then, I did so much damage that my footage actually glitched halfway through. So that's cool. I still got near the end of the fight for you guys, but it sucks that you just didn't get to see the full thing. I almost killed him before he could transition. I mean, that would be a first for me. 
You know how it goes though, but I will say that Mog was more resistant to magic than I expected. Now, Melania, on the other hand, while she doesn't resist magic by much, was a major pain. The first phase, super easy. No complaints there. Melania likes to do uh, a casual pimp walk towards the player, making an easy target for 5k damage. And I just kind of did that multiple times. However, the second phase, she does not do that. Instead, being completely cracked on Red Bull, not a sponsor, uh, constantly attacking me. Yeah, uh, th that was me quitting. I gave up. I didn't want to do this fight the normal way. Uh, I just It would be another grafted dragon situation where I simply had to fight her the normal way. And, like, that's boring and stupid. Like, I could beat her, you know, I did it with the weathered straight sword, but I was able to use the weapon art there. And here, it's just it was just attack normally. I would have nothing to prove. It was also 2 a.m. in the morning, so I, I was not in the mood. <laughs> Alright, that pretty much covers everything I did. So let me, let me just say, right off the bat, man, that this weapon was the best by far. Did you see the damage I did on Morgoth? That alone would make this weapon the top dog, but that insane damage was not exclusive to him. Besides Renala, all bosses fell victim to the mighty Cardian Grandeur. Like, I was expecting this weapon to be good, but not that good. In comparison to the Grafted Dragon, yes, it did great damage on some bosses, even better on one or two like Placidusax. But not only was it still weaker, about a third of the bosses resisted fire. The Weathered Straight Sword was a bad weapon to begin with, but it still carried itself well for what it was. But in the end, yeah, I'm gonna give this weapon an 8 out of 10, mainly because this is only the third weapon I'm trying out, so I'll have to see if something else surpasses my expectations. And that about does it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, you can become a member on the channel if you made it this far, if you want to support my content even more. I am going to be getting an audio interface and using my keyboard to make stupid songs in the in like the middle of the videos, and uh, I mean we'll see where it, where it goes from there. And let me know if you want some more Elden Ring content, some new content. I would be more than happy to play other games for you guys. I know some of you wanted me to play uh, Dead Cells, I believe it was called, but uh, I'll stop rambling at this point. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and to subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone, and of course, stay safe.